Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call the, the meeting of the Standing Committee on Private Bills and Private Members' Public Bills to order and welcome everyone in, welcome everyone in attendance. Uh, my name is Brad Rutherford, MLA for Leduc Beaumont and Chair of the Committee. And I'm going to ask the members and those joining the committee at the, uh, the table introduce themselves for the record and then I will uh, ask those joining by video conference uh, to do the same. So we will begin to my right. Uh, MLA Jeremy Nixon, Calgary Klein. Good morning, everyone. Chris Nielsen, MLA for Edmonton Decor. Bonnie Govan, the Rajan Parliamentary Council. And I'm Trafin Koenig with the Parliamentary Council Office. Good morning, Nancy Robert, Clerk of Journals and Committees. Good morning, Warren Huffman, Committee Clerk. Uh, thank you. We'll, we'll start online. Uh, MLA Singh, you can introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. Peter Singh, MLA Calgary East. Thank you. Member Irwin. Good morning, Janice Irwin, Edmonton Highlands, Norwood. Thank you, MLA Sweet. Morning, Heather Sweet, MLA Edmonton Manning. Thank you, MLA Amory. Good morning, Mickey Amory, MLA Calgary Cross. Thank you, MLA Amory. Uh, if, as a few others might uh, join on, I'll ask them to introduce themselves uh, when they do. Uh, I don't have any substitutions uh, to note uh, for today. Oh, sorry, I do. Peter Singh uh, for MLA Fry. And uh, I just see that uh, MLA Long has joined. Uh, if you could just please introduce yourself uh, for the record. MLA Martin Long from West Yellowhead. Thank you. And the, uh, the housekeeping items to go through. Uh, microphones are operated by Hansard staff. Uh, the committee proceedings are live streamed on the internet and broadcast on Alberta Assembly TV. The audio and video stream and transcripts of the meeting can be accessed via the Legislative Assembly website. Members participating remotely are encouraged to have your camera on while speaking uh, and your microphone muted when not speaking. And remote participants who wish to be placed on the speakers list are asked to just email or send a message to the group chat and the committee clerk and members uh, in the room are asked to please signal the chair and please set your cell phones and other devices uh, to silent. We will now uh, just go to the next portion uh, of the agenda, which is the approval of the agenda. Any comments uh, or questions regarding it? And if not, can I get somebody who would like to move? Uh, MLA Nixon has moved that the agenda for the April 25th, 2022 meeting of the Standing Committee on Private Bills, Private Members, Public Bills be adopted as distributed. Uh, any comments uh, to that motion? Hearing none, uh, I'll just ask that uh, all those in favor of the motion in the room, please say aye. aye. Anyone opposed in the room, please say no. And moving online, all those in favor of the motion online, please say aye. 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 And anyone online opposed, please say no. Hearing none, that motion uh, is carried. Uh, we don't have any uh, minutes to cover off. Uh, I just would ask uh, MLA uh, Sigurdsson uh, just to introduce herself uh, for the record. Lori Sigurdsson, Edmonton Riverview. Uh, thank you for that. And we'll move on to uh, the next portion of the agenda. Petitions on two bills are being heard today. Copies of the bills are available on the committee's internal website and pursuant, pursuant to Standing Order 104, Parliamentary Council's report on the bills was distributed to members last week. And I will give a bit of background on the process today. The petitioners appear before the committee as well as any other interested parties. All individuals giving evidence on the record must be sworn in. Following a presentation by the petitioner, committee members are provided the opportunity to ask questions of the petitioners. Once both hearings have been completed, the committee will deliberate on the bills consecutively and make one of the three following recommendations. That the bill proceed as is, that it proceeds with amendments, or that it not proceed. Once we have made those determinations, uh, I will report on behalf of the committee to the legislature and depending on the decision with respect to each bill, it will follow the same process as any other bill in the House, namely proceedings through, or proceeding through second reading, committee of the whole, third reading, royal assent, uh, or could be dropped from the order paper. Are there any other questions before we invite the petitioners to join us? Mr. Nielsen. Just to clarify, Chair, um, does the committee make an amendment to a bill or do they make a recommendation for an amendment? That's a fair question. Um, I, I, no, go ahead, th please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, the uh, committee will be making recommendations and if it makes a recommendation for an amendment, if the bill proceeded, that, that amendment would happen at committee of the whole stage. Thank you for that clarification. I appreciate that. Uh, any other questions? 
Hearing none. Uh, so Bill PR1, the Calgary Young Men's Christian Association Amendment Act 2022 is first up. In our meeting of March 15th, the committee received an overview of the petition uh, for Bill PR1, Calgary Young Men's Christian Association Amendment Act 2022 from Parliamentary Council. And the petition was found to be in compliance with standing orders 90 to 94. On March 10th, the chair reported to the assembly on the petition pursuant to standing order 99, and the bill was subsequently introduced in the assembly on March 22nd by the bill's sponsor, Mr. Matt Jones, the MLA for Calgary Southeast. In accordance with standing order 100, the bill was referred to the committee after it was introduced. As this is a private bill rather than a private member's public bills, I would suggest to the committee uh, that we provide up to 10 minutes for opening remarks on this bill. Uh, w would anybody object uh, to that? Okay, hearing none, uh, I will now ask uh, that the petitioners for a bill PR1, the Calgary Young Men's Christian Association Amendment Act 2022, uh, be invited to join us. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, and, and making our, your way out here so early on a Monday morning. I'm going to ask Mr. Koning to uh, just swear you in. All right, thank you for that. Uh, just a couple items before we begin the hearing. The, the microphones are operated by Hanser, just so you're aware. They will come on and off uh, as, as you are answering questions or presenting. Uh, if you do have a phone, please uh, just now's the time to turn it to silent uh, and it'll be much appreciated. Um, and as you, you see just in front of you, uh, some of the folks that are online in the television screen, uh, they will be called upon uh, potentially to ask some questions as well uh, and that's where uh, you will see their participation there over teams. Uh, I'm just going to ask that both of you introduce yourselves uh, and then we will introduce ourselves as well uh, for you. So please, uh, whoever wants to go first. Sure, good morning. My name is Shannon Dorham. I'm privileged to be the President and CEO. Thank you Mr. Chair and good morning to the members online. Thank you. Uh, and my name is Brian Milne with Norton Rose Fulbright acting as counsel to the petitioner this morning. And again, thanks for having us. Uh, looking forward to our discussion. I appreciate that, uh, and uh, welcome again. My name's Brad Rutherford, uh, MLA for Leduc Beaumont, so chair of the committee, uh, and I will just go to the right and we'll go around the table. Good morning, my name's Jeremy Nixon. I'm the MLA for Calgary Klein. And I'm Laurie Sigurdsson, the MLA for Edmonton Riverview. Good morning, Chris Nielsen. I'm the MLA for Edmonton Decor. Good morning, Governor Elgin, Parliamentary Council Office. Good morning, I'm Trafton Koenig with the Parliamentary Council Office. Good morning, Nancy Robert, Clerk of Journals and Committees. Good morning, Warren Huffman, Committee Clerk. Uh, thank you. Going online, uh, MLA Singh. Uh, good morning, everyone. Peter Singh, MLA Calgary East. MLA Sweet. Good morning, Heather Sweet, MLA for Edmonton Manning. Member Irwin. Good morning, Janice Irwin, Edmonton Highlands Norwood. MLA Amory. Good morning, Mickey Amory, MLA Calgary Cross. MLA Long. Mr. From, uh, MLA Martin Long, West Yellowhead. Thank you, uh, and MLA Rain has also joined us, so you get to introduce yourself for the record and to our guests. 
Good morning, MLA Pat Rain, Leslie Slave Lake. Uh, thank you for that. So now we will have uh, 10 minutes for the presentation, or up to 10 minutes uh, for the presentation. You can begin your, your remarks, and the timer will, will start when you do. So. so much for having us to speak to the proposed uh, petition for our, our bill. Um, and I just wanted to acknowledge as a guest on Treaty 6 territory and as an organization that operates on Treaty 6, 7, and 8 uh, territory, it is an honor to be here. And as an organization, we honor the ancestral lands uh, of those who come before us. I thought I would begin, uh, we'll move to the next slide, please, Warren, if, if I may, with a little bit of history about YMCA Calgary and what brought us to today. The YMCA is one of the world's largest and oldest youth charities. Our organization was founded in 1844 in London, England, as a way of giving young people a place to engage with healthy activities. The YMCA carries out its mission in 120 countries across the world, including 39 independent associations in Canada, and we are one of those associations. YMCA Calgary began its operation in 1902 and was officially incorporated through an act of legislation in 1908. The Act describes our objects to be to carry on the usual work of the YMCA consisting of the maintenance of a gymnasium, reading rooms, and lecture rooms, and the prosecution of such religious and social effort as will tend to promote the physical, intellectual, moral, and spiritual development of the young men of the City of Calgary. So that's from 1908. During our first 10 years of operation, when the population of Calgary was less than 5,000 people, YMC Calgary operated a library, public reading rooms, recreation activities, and provided classes for young men and boys in downtown Calgary. Our first official branch, which is pictured on the left-hand side of the screen, was an old firehouse known as the Riverside YMCA. Not long after, in 1930, we opened an overnight camp in the Rocky Mountains called Camp Chief Hector. We've served Canadian Armed Forces during World War II, and in 1963, the very first co-ed facilities were opened, the first time women were welcome to participate. That was 1963. So we've come a long way since that time, and the world has changed significantly since the original act of incorporation in 1908. We are now a place for everyone, and our mission has been updated to address our modern context, as you can see on the slide. So we're privileged to stand before you today with a petition to amend our 1908 Act for the purpose of modernizing the objects and powers of YMCA Calgary so that they reflect the modern context and charitable purposes of our organization today. So we'll go to the next slide, please. So who are we today? This slide shows the community program sites in the smaller dots there and the physical locations that comprise our current operating context. Today, YMCA Calgary is one of the city's most impactful operating charities. We are privileged to provide experiences to Calgarians through health and wellness facilities, and those are some of the, the larger pictures you see there, early learning and childcare, outdoor experiences, and community-based programming. As a trusted charity, the YMCA helps create spaces and communities that are welcoming and inspiring. Guided by four core values of honesty, caring, respect, and responsibility, we strive to offer programs and services that give children, youth, and adults the opportunity to belong, grow, thrive, and lead. Our organization thrives from the leadership of more than 800 staff, more than 1,000 volunteers to deliver our mission through health and wellness, aquatics, youth engagement, early years, the outdoors, community outreach, and partnership-based opportunities. Despite its challenges, the pandemic has brought unique opportunities to adapt programming, find creative solutions to emerging needs, and to keep people safe in the settings they need. YMCA Calgary remains a strong and healthy charity focused on supporting Calgarians as their needs change and as the world around us continues to change. We'll go to the next slide, please, Warren. So the next two slides will give a little bit of an overview. I, I understand you've received our, uh, our bill amendment to some of the particulars and some of the reasons uh, we would like to amend this act. And Brian will speak to the uh, proposed powers that we'd like to amend as well. So on the left-hand side of the chart, here is uh, the excerpts of the objects from the original act. And on the right-hand side are the new objects. 
And what we've attempted to do through some color coding is, is highlight some of the key areas. So the red highlights really highlight some of the specific ways that we serve people. Uh, the blue highlights some of the changes in geography. And the green highlights some of the changes in articulating who we serve and to make that more inclusive. So uh, the other piece that I think is worth mentioning is that we have also aligned the amended objects uh, to align with CRA definitions of uh, charitable uh, purposes, which is important, obviously, uh, to our organization as well. So just a couple of highlights. If you look at the left compared to the right side, we're moving from a fairly narrow definition of our physical spaces to one that describes our modern provision, as you would have seen in the slides prior, to public amenities for multi-uses for the benefit of the general public. Again, that moves from a very narrow view to something that's a little bit more broad and inclusive. The proposed amendments also more accurately describe who we are and who we serve, including children, individuals, and families, and how we serve them. So you'll see that we've detailed uh, preschool, daycare, children's programming, and by operating outdoor facilities and experiences. And then lastly, the blue text recognizes our desire to have the capacity to operate within the province of Alberta, whereas our current objects are specified to within the city of Calgary. So I'll move to the next slide and I'll just explain a couple of more pieces here. So obviously a continuation on the left of, of the old objects compared to the proposed amendments on the right. One of the things that we are very proud to offer is community-based activities as well. So all of the dots that you would have seen on the map represent community-based opportunities that we felt were important to outline in this as well. And then bullets E and F describe two new additions to our Act, which outline our desire to conduct charitable activities in alignment with the Canadian Income Tax Act and to do all such other things such that are incidental ancillary to the attainment of our purposes. So speaking uh, of such, it's my pleasure to now welcome Brian to speak to some of the specific proposed changes to the powers of the organization. So over to you, Brian. Thanks very much, Shannon. So good morning once again, and then thanks again for having us. Uh, we'll turn to the powers in just one minute. And Warren, you can leave it on this slide. But just as a, uh, a further comment on the objects that we're putting in the proposed bill, uh, Shannon had noted those have been drafted specifically to uh, adhere to and comply with the CRA's understanding of charitable purposes. So uh, just, just to sort of provide to the committee the, um, the point that a fair bit of sort of care and attention has been put into the specific wording of those purposes, having compared them against um, accepted model purposes from the CRA, our own experience having worked with the CRA as legal counsel and so forth. Uh, so just want to put that context uh, in front of you as well. With respect to the, the specific powers, uh, again, the purpose of the bill is to modernize the, the objects and powers of the YMCA to have them line up with the current context and also future forward-looking context. And um, part of the opportunity we're taking here is to broaden the powers to simply provide that they be those of a natural person, uh, really. And that's in line with modern corporate drafting uh, for, for incorporating statutes, both in Alberta and, and elsewhere. The sort of historical practice, particularly at the time, 1908, when the YMCA's Act was, was first passed, was for incorporating statutes to be very prescriptive with respect to powers, which uh, you know may have made sense at the time in the context, but since then it's, it, it leads to a lot of interpretational uncertainties. You know, when an organization is wanting to pursue uh, any initiative, having to sort of ask, are we really, you know, is what we want to do in line with our powers, and it can lead to unfortunate questions. Well we're not entirely sure, or it's clear, or it's not clear, et cetera. Uh, so we're shifting away from that, and we're simply uh, providing through the new bill here, if, if adopted, that the YMCA, as a corporate body, has the powers of a natural person, which again is consistent with uh, modern corporate drafting, including the uh, Alberta Business Corporations Act, the relatively modern Canada Not-for-Profit Corporations Act, as well as new not-for-profit acts in Ontario and BC, and, and I would imagine, uh, you know, if and when the day comes for Alberta to have a new not-for-profit statute, I would expect something similar to be in that legislation as well. 
So that, that's the context we thought it was important to, to raise in case you're wondering sort of why we're pursuing it. Uh, and then also the other point here being just the geography, uh, you know, again, moving sort of beyond just the confines of Calgary. Great. Thank you, Brian. And I believe our last slide is just a thank you slide. It's been a privilege. And i just like to make mention and a thank you to MLA Matt Jones, who is our sponsor for this bill, and happy to turn it back to you, Mr. Chair, for any questions. Thank you for that, uh, and it was well-timed, just uh, two seconds to spare. So I appreciate that. We're now just going to open up the floor to questions, uh, and then once uh, questions are completed by committee members, uh, just to remind everybody, Parliamentary Council might also ask uh, a few questions. So I have a couple on the list already, uh, starting with MLA Nixon. Excellent. Thank you again for being here with us this morning. So uh, my take on this is it's mostly uh, administrative. Um, you, you guys are already doing most of this work anyway, which is good. You could do great work. I know my kids certainly enjoy your facilities, so thank you for that. Um, and uh, I guess my question is, um, why now? And it's been 114 years, so i wondering if you can give me a bit of context in regards to what's triggered you coming, coming before us today with these changes. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, well, one of the things that I would like to mention is that we've had the privilege of operating Camp Chief Hector for nearly 90 years, and we'd like to make sure the operation of that facility is in line with our, our current constitution. We're also about to pursue significant fundraising activities for that site. Uh, as you've seen, we've been in existence since 1930, and it's time to reinvest into that. And so as a process of going through, looking at all the requirements that we would like to have in place to make sure that campaign is successful, and that uh, all of our government governing articles are, are in good order. Uh, this was really an opportunity for us to go down the path today to make sure that we are in line. We are also looking at our bylaws as well. So this is part of our larger effort, both to set the stage for some significant fundraising, but also to make sure that we are operating within uh, our governing articles. A follow up? Yeah, so, so has your fundraising been limited because of this in the past? No, this is a, it, it has not, uh, but this is a very significant undertaking. We endeavor to raise almost $15 million for the Camp Chief Hector site. Um, and currently today you may be aware, um, MLA Rosens uh, would be familiar that the site is actually outside of the city limits. And so one of the things that we'd like to be sure of is that we can preserve the capacity to continue to run that site within the articles of, of our organization. So that was really, as we started to look at raising significant dollars for that site, we wanted to make sure that it was all nice and um, appropriate for what we've got in writing. Thank you. Uh, just going online now, uh, Member Irwin for a question or follow-up. Wonderful. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, I just uh, want to thank you for the work that you do, you know, particularly with child care. And uh, I know my nephew was talking about going to Chief uh, uh, Camp Chief Hector this summer. So exciting times for him. Um, I would just like to ask, you know, I wonder, um, you, obviously, your focus is on is on the Calgary area. And I know, um, you know, in the Edmonton area, we've got the YMCA's of, of Northern Alberta, and we've got sort of a different, um, you know, kind of uh, model. And, you know, YMCA of Northern Alberta obviously serves Edmonton, it serves Red Deer, Wood Buffalo, Grand Prairie, I think that may be all of them. So is your bill hoping to sort of take on a similar um, structure? Like, have you have you connected with some of the uh, surrounding communities? Thank you for the question, Member Irwin. Uh, so the, for the benefit of the committee, the YMCAs of Northern Alberta consist of the Edmonton area, Grand Prairie, Fort McMurray, and Red Deer. And they have actually gone through the exact same process, which, uh, Member Ermey, you might be aware of. And so often YMCAs have the opportunity to work together formally and informally. And in the case of Northern Alberta, that's a formal amalgamation. And what was required was the very same process we're talking about today to open the constitution to enable activities in the province of Alberta. So the language is actually the same. So there is precedent there. Uh, we as YMCAs do work together very closely. So the four YMCAs in Alberta being the YMCA of Northern Alberta, the YMCA of Calgary, the YMCA of Medicine Hat and Lethbridge do work together uh, quite significantly. A proposed amendments would allow us to formally work together and to support each other in a broader way. So if there was the need to support another YMCA, we actually have then the geographic capability to do that. And the other opportunity is, is to work more intentionally together on shared initiatives like fundraising endeavors if we chose to operate as a province. So being able to expand outside of Calgary would enable us to do that. 
Okay, yeah, you kind of touched on my, my, my follow up there. Um, so you don't, you, you, no concerns from uh, the surrounding uh, YMCAs, clearly you have a fairly good relationship. Absolutely, and thank you for the, the clarification. So when we initiated this process, we did reach out to all of our colleagues across the province, including Northern Alberta, Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, to actually share all of the documentation that's been shared with you so they're aware of exactly what we're proposing. No concerns is the specific answer to your question. And also I think fairly significant opportunity to work together in the future and to also address surrounding communities. As you know, Calgary is growing. And right now we would be constrained to operating within the city, so we would not be able to pursue other opportunities in Airdrie, Cochrane, Okotoks, Chestermere, and, and so on. So uh, no concerns is the short answer to your question. Perfect. Thanks so much. Thank you. We're just going to return to uh, MLA Nixon for a question or follow-up. Excellent. Thank you. Um, again, uh, um, just kind of going down the path of the, the changing of the, the powers uh, to be considered a person, that would be a great day. Um, wondering if you can kind of tell me um, uh, if you've been limited at all by the current definition as it is, uh, legally speaking, in your operations? So I, I guess historically, and maybe Shannon can speak to this a little bit, uh, you know, the answer is probably no in a sense of, of not directly having, I don't believe there's been a program that YMCA Calgary has wanted to pursue that it felt it hasn't been able to, for example, because of its, you know, powers wording before. Um, but I think the intention here is while we have, you know, the bill in front of us and are kind of going down this path of broadening the geographic scope to also address some uncertainties, you know, surrounding where the YMC can and cannot operate, uh, take the opportunity to also, you know, address what really probably were historically also uncertainties as to, you know, specifically what actions and steps the YMCA may have been able to take and certainly going forward more so looking to, you know, make sure we don't run into those sorts of questions down the road. Yep. There we go. So, perfect. Uh, so, is there a chance that decisions that have been made in the past um, may be problematic for you guys because of that? Or? No, sorry, and I wouldn't want to suggest that. It's, it's really, um, you know, the powers when you look at the, the wording of the Act fairly prescriptive as far as, you know, addressing certain uh, certain actions, the power to, you know, operate, what was the language in the original act, the um, uh, system of technical education, for example, and, and operate such branches as required. Uh, you know, that has been in repealed, in fact, partly just because it's not relevant to what the YMCA Calgary is doing today and what it plans to be doing forward. Uh, but just um, not, again, the powers would not have fully addressed the scope and breadth of what the YMCA was, was looking to do. And they weren't, they weren't uh, prescriptive in a negative sense. They, they didn't necessarily restrict the YMCA from doing what it did. They just didn't, they weren't in the act here to say, you know, you have the ability to enter into contracts and, and do all the things that you would as a corporate body under, under modern statutes. Thank you for that. Uh, MLA Sigurdsson for a question. Paula. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, well, I just want to, I'm more familiar with the YMCA uh, here in Edmonton, because this is where I live, but uh, I know that uh, the work of the Ys are, is very important, and I just want to thank you so much for all that that you do. And just to share that a lifetime ago, I used to work at Bissell Centre, and I was the director of Moonlight Bay on Lake Wobbeman. And so we would meet collectively all the camps, and, and Camp Chief Hector was always sort of the star. You know, they did so many great things, and I was always admiring all their work. But uh, that was a very long time ago. Anyway, uh, so a lot of the things that are in the objectives that are new, you know, that, why you're uh, bringing this legislation forward, uh, you are doing you were already doing. You just, you know, uh, expanded some of the things. So you're formalizing that. Am I correct in just the sort of the tax rules and things like that that you can then benefit from are uh, sort of the key piece of this? So, so uh, I could speak to that. So I think the, the, the balance with the objects has been trying to capture primarily what the YMCA does. So, I mean, they've been driven by what YMCA Calgary does day to day and what it also 
plans to do, which is perhaps you know an extension of what it's doing today. Uh, so that was that was the the basis for all the different items in there. But as far as the specific wording and language and sort of description of each of those, those have been drafted specifically to ensure that they are considered exclusively charitable. And that's a requirement of YMCA Calgary's status as a registered charity, is it has to ensure that everything it does is exclusively charitable. And so the CRA uh, you know, can have concerns where an organization's activities open the door to things that would not be considered charitable. So again, we've, we've drafted these from the starting point of what does the YMCA Calgary do, but then how do we present that and, and, and frame that within the objects to ensure that it is clear that everything in this list is intended to be and will be exclusively charitable. Thank you. No follow? No? MLA Nixon has one more comment. Excellent. I actually don't have a question. I did have a comment. And uh, I just wanted to thank you guys so much. As Parliamentary Secretary of Civil Society, uh, let you know how thankful we are as a government and uh, MLAs uh, for the work that you do in the community and building strong communities and uh, providing opportunity for, for families and children and, and others to be able to gather. So thank you for your work. Uh, thank you. Um, that's the end of our list. At this point, I'll just pause for a moment if there's any other comments or questions. Okay, hearing, uh, hearing none. Uh, thank you for taking the time to present to us uh, today. Uh, we're just going to turn over to Parliamentary Council, though, just for a few comments and maybe some questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With your indulgence, I just have two, uh, two brief uh, questions just for the record. And so it's uh, touching on some uh, items that have already been discussed somewhat, but I'm uh, wondering if either of the representatives for the petitioner uh, can uh, talk to us about, um, uh, to the best of your knowledge, whether there are any debts or liabilities of the corporation that might be impacted by the proposed changes in this bill. Not to my knowledge, no. All right. And are you aware of any uh, third parties that might object or do object to the changes proposed in this bill? Not at this point, no. All right, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, any other comments? Hearing none, thank you. I, I got a little ahead of myself there, but thank you for joining us today and taking the time to, to come up uh, and giving a presentation and answering uh, our questions. Uh, so that concludes the hearing uh, committee members for Bill PR1. Uh, and uh, as I just did, of course, thank, uh, thank the, the folks for joining us today. Uh, of course, you are, you are free to go if you like, uh, or you can uh, just join us uh, and, and watch the rest of the, the committee proceedings if you so choose to. Um, and uh, we will be now moving on to uh, Bill PR2, the Calgary uh, Heritage Authority Amendment Act. So at our meeting on March 15th, the committee uh, also received an overview of, of the petition for Bill PR2, the Calgary Heritage Authority Amendment Act 2022 from Parliamentary Council. And the petition was also found to be in compliance with Standing Orders 90 to 94. As Chair, I reported uh, to the Assembly on the petition uh, March 16th, pursuant to Standing Order 99. And the bill was introduced in the Assembly on March 22nd by the bill sponsor, Mr. Jeremy Nixon, the MLA for Calgary Klein. In accordance with Standing Order 100, the bill was referred to the committee after it was introduced. So now I will ask that the petitioners for Bill PR2, the Calgary Heritage Authority Amendment Act, uh, be invited to, uh, to join us. Thank you uh, for joining us today. I'm just going to ask Ms. Govindarajan to just swear in the petitioners, please.
Thank you for that. And just a couple things to note before we begin. The microphones are operated by Hansard staff. Uh, if you have a phone, please turn it to silent. Uh, and the folks that are from the committee that are joining us online will just be on the TV uh, right in front of you uh, when we get to the portion around uh, questions. I'm going to ask you both to introduce yourselves and then we will introduce ourselves here at the table and online as well. So please go ahead. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Josh Trapto, Chief Executive Officer of Heritage Calgary. Good morning, members. Mr. Chair, Yvonne Chenier, QC from Integral Org, Council for the Petitioner. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm MLA Brad Rutherford uh, Leduc from Leduc Beaumont uh, and Chair of the Committee. And I'll just turn it to my right. Good morning, guys. It's uh, Jeremy Nixon, MLA for Calgary Klein. Good morning, Laurie Sigurdsson, Edmonton Riverview. Good morning, Chris Nielsen, I'm the MLA for Edmonton Decor. Ani Govindarajan, Parliamentary Council Office. Good morning, I'm Trafton Koenig, also with the Parliamentary Council Office. Good morning, Nancy Robert, Clerk of Journals and Committees. Good morning, Warren Huffman, Committee Clerk. Thank you, I'll just go online, uh, MLA Sweet. Good morning, Heather Sweet, MLA for Edmonton Nanny. Member Irwin. Good morning, Janice Irwin, Edmonton Highlands Norwood. Thank you, MLA Singh. Good morning, Peter Singh, MLA Calgary East. Uh, MLA Amory. Good morning, Mickey Amory, MLA Calgary Cross. MLA Long. Good morning, Martin Long, MLA for West Yellowhead. And MLA Rain. Good morning, Pat Rain, MLA Lesser Slave Lake. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, so we now turn to the presentation. Uh, there's 10 minutes uh, to make the presentation uh, and uh, inform the committee uh, of, uh, of the, the bill that you, that you have brought forward. Uh, and you can begin your remarks and the timer will start when, when you do. Correct. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Uh, my, it's my pleasure to speak to the committee today on uh, Bill PR2, the Calgary Heritage Authority Amendment Act 2022. Heritage Calgary is a civic partner of the City of Calgary with a mission to embrace and keep space for the stories of this place. We have existed in our current form since 2000 when our bill was last amended when the city merged two previous heritage organizations to create the then Calgary Heritage Authority. In 2015, the organization took their first step to becoming a truly standalone organization from the city when they hired uh, myself as executive director. In 2019, we became a civic partner of the city of Calgary, which came with operations funding. We've been working with the city of Calgary for the last couple of years to improve and continue to enhance our, gov our governance as an organization. Amendments to our act are the last piece of that work. Some of the key amendments that are before you today, including changing our legal name from the Calgary Heritage Authority to Heritage Calgary, updating definitions and terminology, including using gender neutral terms by shifting from chairman to chair, changing terminology of members to directors, updating the name of the city's inventory to the inventory of evaluated historic resources, and the definition of heritage resource being updated to align with the expanded provincial definition. We're also making changes to reflect Heritage Calgary's role in designing and delivering public programs, reduction to the minimum board size from 10 members to eight members. The maximum remains at 12, and this was a recommendation from our governance review. The addition of a new section allowing for the board to recommend the removal of a director to council by a two thirds vote of the board and for council to also have the ability to remove a director the extension of the time to fill vacancies from 60 days to 90 days, provision for a board member to act in the role of interim executive director if required, and the addition of a new section about indemnity, uh, limitation of liability, and insurance for directors. These proposed amendments were approved by Calgary City Council at their combined meeting of council on February 15th, 2022. As part of this process, we have integrated advice and comments from the Office of Parliamentary Council and the Canadian Revenue Agency, including advice about changing the organization's legal name from the Calgary Heritage Authority to Heritage Calgary to ensure we're able to remain as a registered charity. Since undergoing a rebranding process in 2019, we have operated as Heritage Calgary. We identified that the new name better reflects our vision, mission and mandates and our values. The name change also aligns with similar heritage organizations across the country, including Heritage Toronto, Heritage Vancouver, and Heritage Saskatchewan. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair and members of committee for your consideration. Ms. Chenier and I are happy to answer any questions you may have. 
Well, I appreciate that, and, uh, and thank you for the presentation uh, and your opening comments. Uh, we are just going to turn to the committee uh, for questions. We'll start with uh, MLA Nielsen, and just so you're aware, Parliamentary Council uh, may have some remarks and questions afterwards as well. MLA Nielsen, please go ahead. Thanks, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you both uh, for being here uh, this morning and presenting to us. Um, so we might as well just jump right in. Uh, will these legislative uh, changes um, uh, change, I guess, how the authority uh, operates right now? Not, not really. Um, the work that we're already doing, the programs we're already delivering, um, won't change. It's again similar to the whys, just cleaning up the legislation to make sure that we can do what we actually set out to do. Um, when the organization was created in 2000, um, it was the idea that it would still be a very close city organization, kind of run by the city. And over the last 20 years, we've seen that progression to being a truly arm's length organization uh, with our own staff um, and, and our own authority. And so just making sure that we're within the confines of our act uh, is one of the reasons we're here today to, to with those amendments. Sure, yeah. Um, amendments include, of course, uh, the addition of a treasurer on the authority board. Um, have the finances of the authority um, been controlled in the past? So we, we, we've, we've had a treasurer in the past. They just haven't been defined in the act. And so that was one piece we wanted to make sure that it was defined within the legislation. Uh, as part of our funding agreement, we also have to go through an audit every year with the city of Calgary. And so our books are audited. Um, and, uh, and that oversight is provided by the treasurer. Thank you for that. Uh, let's turn to MLA Nixon for a question follow up. Excellent. Thank you for being here today and for your leadership uh, in regards to heritage uh, and preservation of heritage in our city. So thank you for that. Um, Parliamentary Council has recommended an amendment to the bill, uh, one which pertains to liabilities and liabilities of directors. I'm just wondering if you have any concerns with the potential amendment uh, or any thoughts on whether the committee should be uh, recommending this amendment to the legislature. The amendment pertaining to the director's liability, the directors will, will not be responsible for their acts unless it's caused by their own negligence or fraud. Is that the one you're referring to? I believe so, Andrew yes. Nixon? Yes, and, and that's to bring it in line with modern governance uh, statutes uh, in the not-for-profit area, mm -hmm. um, including the most recent government of Alberta legislation, the Freedom to Care Act, which was enacted last year by, the, by this assembly, and um, which makes volunteers and directors of the Calgary, Calgary Heritage Authority, hopefully will be named Heritage Calgary, are volunteers, and as such, they would not be responsible for, uh, or li personally liable for any of their actions under that act, and it's codified in this act as well, similar to that. So just to clarify then, you have no concerns with us recommending that amendment to the legislature? No, because it's similar to other okay. non-profit legislation, including um, similar Alberta legislation. Thank you. Um, uh, Emily Nielsen, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chair. Um, so how will these amendments uh, support uh, the protection and the preservation of, uh, of heritage sites in, in Calgary? So um, one of the big changes is just clarifying what programs and services Heritage Calgary is able to offer. Uh, one of our core mandates is to maintain the inventory of evaluated historic resources. Uh, in 2000, when the legislation was created, it was still just a potentials list. Now anything on the inventory, which is over 900 properties, uh, have historical significance. They're not, des not all of them are designated as provincial or, or um, municipal heritage resources, but uh, it continues to give us that flexibility to really do the public programs. Uh, we do a number of walking tours, uh, partnering with community associations to um, help them with the preservation of, of heritage in their community. Uh, so. It, it really just is in line with the work we're, we're currently doing around, um, you know, uh, telling the stories of, of Calgary, um, and also that piece around the, our name, Calgary Heritage Authority. Um, it wasn't a very inviting or opening name. Um, you know, people would come to us and say, "Use your authority to save this property," and we didn't have that authority. That was the city of Calgary that that needed to do that. Um, and so, uh, really trying to also kind of get away from just being built heritage but also around uh, people's story and cultural landscapes has been a really big focus 
for us in the last number, number of years. We've been partnering with the Calgary Public Library for our historian in residence, and each, uh, each historian has a different theme. Um, so we've had one who's looked at Calgary's LGBTQ plus history, uh, Calgary's Métis history, Calgary's uh, prehistory, and then the current one is looking at how museums in a modern context um, are still part of the heritage ecosystem. And follow up. Uh, and actually, some of your comments segued nicely into uh, one of the other questions I'd like to ask. So, uh, as was actually just mentioned, um, we did have some changes that were made by the current government um, around heritage uh, legislation in the province. How has this impacted uh, your organization and, and heritage sites in Alberta? And, and have the changes uh, informed, uh, I guess, any of the changes that you've presented here today uh, within your bill? Uh, so uh, are you talking about the um, removal of the um, uh, one of the provincial designations where it was a registered historical site and not a designated historic site? Yeah, so when we were talking yeah. about, like, as, as was mentioned, the, the Freedom to Care Act, uh, you know, any changes that have occurred there that have, um, I guess, put you in a position where you've had to make some changes, which, of course, we now see today in your bill. No, no. There's, yeah, none, none of the changes uh, made to the Historic Resources Act impact any of the changes that are before you today. Uh, thank you for that. Emily uh, Singh has his hand up for a question and a follow-up. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks uh, very much for the excellent presentation. Mostly my question has been answered here, but I would just uh, really read it a bit here. Can you confirm that the City of Calgary reviewed the proposed changes to the governance framework of the authority and they agree with the proposed amendments? Yes, they did. Uh, they had provided a, a signed letter that was included in our petition package uh, and those, uh, those amendments were approved by City Council at their combined meeting in February. Uh, we worked very closely with both um, the Law Department at the City of Calgary along with the Planning Department and the Office of Partnerships. So uh, it was very much a, a collaborative process through the City for them to be comfortable uh, with these changes and, and for Council to ultimately approve them. Thank you for answering. And what are their inputs, if there are any they can expound on? Sorry, what was that? Uh, what are their the inputs uh, into this here? And can you expound on it there? Expand on it a little bit more. Expand on, I didn't catch the... On, on the inputs. The inputs, the city's inputs? Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. So um, the, the the piece around uh, how members are appointed. Uh, so me board members are still appointed by City Council uh, with recommendation from the Board of Heritage Calgary. Uh, we use um, a search firm uh, for our, our board, board selection. And then also uh, the piece around the definition of heritage. Uh, the city also, um, you know, obviously was, was quite interested in that to make sure uh, that it was in alignment with the city's municipal development plan, uh, but that was also not too confined uh, based on what the province considers as heritage. Thank you for answering and thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I don't have anybody else on the list for questions, so I'll just pause for a moment to see if anybody else has uh, any questions. Okay, hearing none, uh, thank you again for, for joining us today and presenting and answering questions. Uh, and I'm, I am going to get to that part. And uh, we are now turning to uh, Parliamentary Council. Uh, and Ms. Govinda Rajan uh, has any uh, questions or anything to follow up? Um, I just have one uh, follow up. If you could just uh, confirm for the record, are you aware of any uh, third parties that uh, may object or that do object to the changes proposed by this bill? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, uh, thank you for that. So that concludes uh, the hearing into Bill PR2. And again, thank you uh, for being in attendance with here uh, with us today. Uh, you're welcome to leave uh, if you like. It says here free to go. You've always been free to go. Uh, <laughs> I have no ability to make you stay. Uh, we'll be. Uh, well, you will be advised uh, of the, uh, to the disposition of this bill after the committee has finished its deliberations. Um, we are now going to be turning to uh, deliberations, but starting with uh, PR1. Members, at this time, the committee will begin its deliberations on Bill PR1, and as mentioned earlier, the committee is ultimately, ha must ultimately decide whether the bill should proceed, proceed with amend amendments, or not proceed. So I will now turn to, uh, yes, yeah, sorry. 
Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Before uh, the committee b begins its uh, deliberations, I uh, just want to offer two small clarifications, uh, and I suspect they'll probably relate more to the deliberations on Bill PR2, but I, I, I just want to emphasize them now. So uh, the first point is just to, to make clear Parliamentary Council's uh, 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 role uh, with private bills. So we, of course, assist the petitioners, but we do not advise the petitioners. So the contents of the bill are uh, based on what the petitioners would like to see in that bill. So we are not providing advice to those petitioners about the content. And the other point for committee members to keep in mind is that Parliamentary Council's report is our legal advice to the committee. So that is not circulated generally. So just to, to keep in mind that that report and the contents of that report is for the purposes of committee members only. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, and still just looking around the room to see if there's any comments around uh, Bill PR1. Not seeing any in the room. Anyone online have any comments around Bill PR1? Okay, then we can move to, if, uh, if somebody would like to move a motion regarding Bill PR1. Mr. Nielsen. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, you probably have the uh, uh, exact wording pulled right out of my head as you normally do, Mr. Chair, uh, but uh, suffice to say, I would move that uh, Bill PR1 uh, proceed back to the House for debate. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, and we're just a little bit ahead of you here. So is that the wording that you would like to just read into the record for us? Uh, yeah. So. Um, I move that the Standing Committee on Private Bills and Private Members Public Bills recommend that Bill PR1, Calgary Young Men's Christian Association Amendment Act 2022, proceed. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments uh, to that motion? Okay, hearing none, I'll call the question. Uh, for the motion is moved by Emily Nielsen. All those in favor in the room, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed in the room, please say no. And moving online, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 And anyone online opposed, please say no. Thank you. That motion is carried. Uh, members, uh, that would conclude the deliberations on Bill PR1, and the committee uh, must uh, now consider directing research services to prepare a draft report, including the committee's recommendations, and would a member wish to move a motion to direct research services to prepare a committee's draft report? MLA Nixon has moved. Uh, the following motion will get up on the screen. Emily Nixon, if you want to just read it into the record uh, and then add any comments, if you have any, to this motion. Excellent. <clears throat> that the Standing Committee on Private Bills and Private Members Public Bills A, direct research services to prepare a draft report on the committee's review of Bill PR1, Calgary Young Men's Christian Association Amendment Act 2022 which includes the committee's recommendations and B, authorizes the chair to approve the committee's final report to the assembly on or before noon on Wednesday, April 27th, 2022. Thank you, Emily Nixon. Do you have any comments? Uh, or does the whole committee have any comments to that motion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion as moved by Emily Nixon in the room, please say aye. aye. Anyone opposed, please say no. Uh, moving online, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed online, please say no. That motion is carried. And I would note that if anybody would like to provide a minority report uh, to that, we'll have to uh, provide it by noon, Thursday, April 28th, 2022. Moving on to uh, Bill PR2, the Calgary Heritage Authority Amendment Act. Uh, so now we will begin deliberations on that bill. Uh, and if anybody has any uh, questions uh, or comments around it, we just need to decide if it needs to proceed, proceed with amendments or not proceed. I will now open it up to discussion. Would anybody then like to move a motion? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Nielsen. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, obviously, during our deliberations, um, as uh, you know, Mr. Nixon had uh, brought up earlier, we also had that question around um, uh, Section 12.1 uh, uh, around the liabilities. Um, you know, I think the committee would uh, probably be uh, prudent in maybe recommending uh, a bit of an addition uh, based on some of the um, advice uh, from Parliamentary Council to give to uh, the House to uh, maybe consider uh, putting into that bill just to maybe kind of um, 
expand a little bit and provide some some protections in there. I don't know if there's actually a motion available. There is. We'll just get it up on the screen here and see if uh, if it's something you're interested in moving. So that adds to the, the wording of uh, the amendment. Um, and if you would like to move it as, as written, uh, please read it into the record. Sure, I can probably uh, manage that. Uh, I move that the Standing Committee on Private Bills and Private Members Public Bills recommend that Bill PR2, Calgary Heritage Authority Amendment Act 2022, proceed with the following amendment. Section 11 is amended in the proposed Section 12.1 by adding the following immediately after subsection 3. Sub 4, nothing in this section affects the liability of the authority with respect to loss or damage, including loss or damage caused by an act or omission of a director for which the director is not liable under Section 2. All right, thank you for, uh, for moving that motion. Any other questions or comments from the committee uh, regarding this motion? Hearing none, I will call the question then on the motion as moved by MLA Nielsen. All those in the room in favour, please say aye. 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 Anyone in the room opposed, please say no. And moving online, all those in favor online, please say aye. 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 Anyone online opposed, please say no. The motion is carried. Uh, members, uh, that, uh, finished the that finishes the deliberations on Bill PR2 and the committee should now consider directing research services to prepare a draft report including the, the committee's recommendations. Would a member wish to move a motion to direct research services to prepare a committee's draft report? MLA Nixon has uh, has moved. Uh, we'll just get the wording out. Emily Nixon, if that's the uh, motion you'd like to move, please read it into the record. And sure. I move that the Standing Committee on Private Bills and Private Members Public Bills A, direct research services to prepare a draft report on the committee's review of Bill PR2, Calgary Heritage Authority Amendment Act 2022, which includes the committee's recommendations, and B, authorize the chair to approve the committee's final report to the assembly on or before noon on Wednesday, April 27th, 2022. Uh, thank you. Any questions or comments to that uh, motion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favour of the motion as moved by Emily Nixon in the room, please say aye. 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 Anyone in the room opposed, please say no. And moving online, all those in favour online, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed online, please say no. And that motion is carried. I would note uh, for members that any minority reports should be provided to the committee clerk by noon, Thursday, April 28th, 2022. Is there any other business for the committee? Hearing none, uh, the date of the next meeting will be at the call of the chair. Uh, if there's nothing else for the committee's consideration, uh, can I get a motion uh, to adjourn? Mr. Nielsen has moved that the meeting uh, be adjourned. All those in favour, uh, both in the room and online, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, please say no. That motion is carried. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned.